Hey cross car fans, KJ Racing here. Uh, welcome to my messy garage. So I've been stripping down the VF1, getting it ready for paint. Uh, I noticed it's been a while since I posted, so I thought I should do an update. Now, I, I couldn't just strip this down and send it for paint because there's something important I needed to do first. That's the next evolution of the VF1. So as you guys know, or may not know, this is a VF1, which stands for Variable Frame Cart. Now, if you've watched the whole series, you've seen that you can do pretty much anything you want with this chassis. Any engine, A-arm, seat, rear end, uh, the possibilities are open. I tried to build a modular chassis for a single seat buggy that you could put anything you wanted on. And people have been doing this. Uh, if you check out the build group on Facebook, You'll see that other builders are using different rear ends. Some are cookie cutter copying exactly what I've been doing, which is completely fine. You know it works, but some people are using a Miata rear end. Uh, some people are side mounting the engine. It's been a huge success. So it makes me want to do more. I'm just a garage guy wanting to help other garage guys. Uh, I have a real job. I'm not trying to become a YouTube star. I'm just trying to help other dudes like me. If I had seen somebody put out plans in a full detailed build series, uh, you guys wouldn't be seeing this because I would be buying their plans and watching their videos. But since I was the one that, that cracked the code and got the request to do it, I felt obligated to do it. So thank you for that. Uh, it's been pretty fun doing it. On to the good stuff. Here's the next evolution. Solid axle version. It's going to be an independent swing arm, so no engine riding on the swing arm. Your un unsprung weight is low. It's going to have an anti-sway bar mounted in the back. No more trying to source independent rear suspensions. No buying expensive setups. It's literally just get the solid axle, bolt on your ATV parts, bolt your engine in, and go. I've been working on this for six to eight months. This isn't like a brand new thing. Uh, some people, very few people, knew the secret of this. Uh, I wanted to keep it a secret until I had, had it all sorted out. And I needed a blank chassis to get measurements check the angles for the swing arm and see how I was going to build it. So I'm going to tell you something cool here. This axle, everything hub to hub, including the hubs, less than 300 bucks. Less than 300 bucks. That includes the sprocket and the brake disc. So I started out as converting ATVs. This is kind of the final evolution of that. Um, I converted a Polaris Outlaw to have independent rear suspension, but with this, you can convert any quad, any chain-driven quad. Let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Any chain-driven quad can be turned into a cross cart with a $300 rear axle off the shelf, go power sports. I'm really sure this axle can handle 40 horsepower. I would not recommend hooking up a motorcycle engine to this. I mean, you can try it. I just wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> uh, I don't know how much power a one inch axle can handle, but quarter inch keyways just don't, don't seem strong enough to me. But you've seen that 40 horsepower ATV engine keep up with that crotch rocket engine because of the torque. So maybe it will work. I'm not gonna try it. Here's what I am going to do. I'm going to hook up a Predator. Now there's been a bit of a craze on the internet recently about these old farm equipment engines, generator engines, whatever you want to call them. So I might as well try one out. Gas and brake. Set the seat up for my daughter to drive it and see how she likes driving the car cross cart. Maybe have one for the wife. So yeah, the idea of this is 2,000 bucks and two weeks. Two week build time and $2,000 build budget. 
Everybody wants the look of one of these, but they want it to cost as much as one of those. There's gotta be a middle ground. <laughs> There's gotta be some kind of middle ground. The engine and the rear end was well under a thousand bucks. So we have our whole drivetrain and we're not even to the halfway point of the build cost. Uh, I've been looking at my summer schedule, finding some times when I'm not flying to uh, take a, a week or two week vacation to get this built. Since it is a generator engine, I'm not gonna use 0 0.095 tubing. Um, I'm gonna use 0 0.065, which is probably twice the wall thickness of a Yerf dog with a roll cage. So I'm not too worried about that. It's gonna be exciting. Gonna be exciting.